So where do you get the nematodes to rear, then apply to your alfalfa fields? Nematodes are reared using wax moth larvae as hosts. Wax moth larvae, or galeria, can be found at most bait supply shops. Our lab uses a company located in Trumansburg, New York, called Morning Dew 2. The nematodes stage release from host insects, galeria in the lab or rearing process, or the alfalfa snout beetle larvae or grubs in the field are called infective juveniles, or IJs. Once IJs emerge in your cup, you will notice a yellow film on the sides of the cup as well as near the top of the cup. Nematodes also will clump together and look like a yellow film along the edges or, or the rim of each cup. IJs will also gather on the lids. They will seek out any areas of moisture and then clump together. The right hand side you see inside the lip an area where many nematodes have come together. The IJs for field application are washed through window screens to separate the IJs from the dead cadavers as well as the sawdust in each cup. We like to use 20 gallon garbage cans for our collection containers. You can use whatever you have on hand to wash your IJs for field application. This farmer used window screen over five gallon buckets to collect the nematodes he will need for his field application. The on-farm rearing application of the nematodes, the materials and supplies needed for that task. I will now list the materials and supplies you will need to rear your own nematodes for field application. I suggest having two of each item on hand to prevent cross-contamination of your nematode species. If you have a cross-contamination, you risk losing your nematode population and thus having a less effective field application. Wax moth larvae, as previously mentioned, are used as host insects for production of nematodes. The worms arrive in 16 ounce cups filled with sawdust and approximately 250 live galeria. A measuring spoon. Most people have measuring spoons in their household. Measuring spoons range between one teaspoon and one tablespoon and work very well as a device to spread out the IJs on your cups. A medicine spoon. Most people have these as well or you can pick them up at a drugstore. They typically hold between one and two teaspoons. They also allow you to simply pour out the IJs onto your cups. Syringes. We have plenty of the 10 to 30 cc syringes here at the lab. If you would like to use these, which I think work really well, all you have to do is request it with your starter cups or cadavers. Dosing droppers. These work great if you only have a few cups to inoculate. They only hold about one teaspoon, so if you have more than, say, 8 or 16 cups, you really want to use something different. You also need to have a container to collect your IJs. You will wash using non-chlorinated water into a measuring cup, 16 ounces or larger, or a large bowl, or maybe a large Tupperware container. Anything that's going to hold a significant volume of water, which has to be non-chlorinated. In a pinch, dish pans also work very well because they can hold a lot of liquid. For aiding in retrieval, you will need either a small bristled paintbrush like you would use for watercoloring, or a toothbrush. You will also need to have a source of non-chlorinated water. This is very important, I will keep stressing it. Non-chlorinated water must be used or nematodes can die. If you have any further questions, you can contact the Shields Lab at my email address that's listed there, or you can give me a call if you have any questions. You can also reach out to your county extension agents as they have been very well trained on the snout beetle process for rearing nematodes. If you would like to check out our Facebook page, look for Alfalfa Snout Beetle Project and then click like. We will have updates on our progress throughout the summer as well as any other workshops and any other information we think is important to you.